Did you know, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic has a quote-unquote official way to beat it. Pieced together from the strategy guide, official literature, and even Revan's later appearance in the Old Republic, which told us much about the canonical path the character once tread. There was a time, a moment, when my destiny wasn't certain. That moment is gone. Not to mention, during Revan's Revelation cutscene, Bastila will openly share the chronological order in which planet to visit, retreading Revan's steps as he and his wayward apprentice obtained the star maps. Revan visited each of these worlds searching for clues to reveal the hidden location of the Star Forge. So throw out that dark side run where you decided to take the life out of Life Day. Please, Zobar, don't do this! Please! As in today's video, we will be exploring the true path that Bioware intended the player to follow and the reasoning behind some of those now iconic choices that shaped the entire franchise's story in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. It should be noted that this video is not a walkthrough of the game, but rather following broad, important choices that shape the narrative as a whole, and which of those choices ultimately the developers decided the player took. With that being said, character creation is fairly straightforward, as the Old Republic really removes any ambiguity of Revan's sex, being male, and his appearance, that of what fans affectionately refer to as the Mullet Man. Although it is worth noting, the Old Republic Encyclopedia states Revan officially was a soldier of the three starter classes available. The game then begins on the Endar Spire, which serves mostly as a tutorial and as such is on rails with no real choices to make, outside of how to deal with multiple enemy encounters and setting Karth up to join our party. Next, we then travel to Taris. Taris is effectively the planet which introduces you to your companions with Karth Onasi, Bastila Shan, Mission Veo, and Zalbar joining our quest. But it doesn't boast too many story-altering choices to speak of, probably because it's about to be wiped from the face of existence, outside of canonically saving the Undercity inhabitants from the dreaded Rakul Plague versus betraying them, which I cover both options extensively in a three-part video on Rack Ghouls linked in the description below. However, as previously stated, this video is more focused on the order of planets to beat as intended by the developers. Although the player will always then visit Dantooine, it's interesting to note a few things on our next set destination. As we travel to the Jedi planet, remarkably as you take up the role of a Jedi, there is no defined role to choose between Jedi Guardian, Consular or Sentinel that Revan canonically chose. And while you could argue that Revan was not even restricted by any of the three classes, or even the light or dark side powers, as he's later shown to be a mix of Sith Sorcerer and Jedi Guardian when faced in the Foundry. It seems whatever head cannon you're arguing at the screen right now is probably right. However, an important detail to point out is we recruit the Cathar Juhani to our party in the Dark Grove versus Murderer for her past transgressions. And it's also a good time to confirm at no time canonically do we betray and murder any party member in the game. So without further ado, here's a breakdown of why the developers chose the next chronological order of planets. Again, I thank you. I am sure I will hear great things about you in the future. Entering Tatooine first logically makes sense, as no doubt the developers wanted the player to gather all the party members they could as quickly as possible. And who wouldn't want the translator slash hunter killer HK-47 in their party? Observation. I am wasted in a shop or translating for some moisture farmer. If you need an efficient combatant, return to purchase me, I beg you. The more pressing reason to canonically visit Tatooine first could be argued with the inevitable Kalo Nord confrontation. As you're no doubt well aware, Kalo Nord was subsequently hired by Darth Malak to track down Bastila Shan and capture her alive. 
Although Kalo can be encountered on whichever planet the player visits first post Dantooine, the most telling artifact that bolsters his location as Tatooine and the player's first world to visit is Kalo's own data pad found on his corpse, which reads, This data pad contains a record of Kalo Nord's trophy kills, sentient and otherwise. The last entry is an account of a recent Rancor hunt in which he discusses killing a Rancor, stating, The explosion blew me clear of the shredded corpse, but luckily the head was still intact. If I take it to Taras, I'm sure Darvik will mount it in his trophy room along with the other heads I've collected for him. A fact about this is backed up by the very Rancor's head appearing at Darvik's estate before it blew up, which is, if I may be so bold, a really nice touch. What places Nord firmly in Tatooine, forcing Tatooine to officially be the first location the player travels, is his next entry in which he says, Darvik's also expressed interest in hiring me. I may take up his offer, even though I still have yet to claim the greatest hunting trophy of all, a pearl from one of the crate dragons on Tatooine, which is, ironically, the confirmed crate kill Revan and his party were responsible for prior to killing Callow and his desire to hunt the crate dragon. Let's go, boys. It's showtime. Visiting the forest world of Kashyyyk, or Kashyyyk as Bastila would say, is pretty self-explanatory as the logical second planet to visit, given that you have to obtain the star map with the help of Joe Lee Bindo, and as such, he will join your party, which would bestow the player with all recruitable party members by planet number two. Got something on your mind, do you? Oh, I get it. Let's play with the old man's head, is it? He's half senile. He'll forget I said anything. Wait, well, uh, what was this about anyway? And we can resolve the Zalbar side quest as well. <laughs> Moving on to the ocean planet of Manan, with Jolie now in your party, you would be approached by his friend Sunri about the Manan side quest. Although canonically Revan and his companions choose not to poison the Kulto, in a dark side run, poisoning the Firak shark can result in a permanent exile, regardless of alignment, so leaving Manan until later makes perfect sense. Plus, witnessing the escalating tensions between the Republic and the Sith in a forced diplomatic encounter makes the final planet so much sweeter. You Republic people are so pathetic, sitting around groveling at the table scraps the Galactic Senators deign to give you. It makes me sick. The Senators work for the good of the whole galaxy, not for individual gain. Ha! Don't make me laugh, you gutless simp. It's the destiny of weak-minded fools like you to be ruled over by the strong, like we Sith. I'm warning you. Don't push me or you'll get just what you're asking for. Try it. Just try it. I'd love to see you throw the first punch. And with all the cameras around, the Selkath would be all over you inside of 30 seconds. You break their laws. You pay the price, Republic scum. But I can see that you're not man enough to back up your words anyway. If you ever feel like relieving yourself of your worthless existence, feel free to come by our enclave here. We have many, many ways to fulfill your wish. Next, we head to the Sith world of Korriban. The most telling factor that Korriban is the ideal final planet is that after retrieving the four earlier star maps, the Leviathan will abduct your party, and after a confrontation takes place, Malak will duel Bastila, having her captured by the Dark Lord in a bid to make her his new apprentice. Somewhat coincidentally, or if you don't believe in coincidence, Korriban does not allow Bastila to be one of your party. So, by saving it for last, you naturally take advantage of the developer's prompt. Plus, if you're not following the canon path, there is a really cool dark side revelation Revan will share if you save Korriban after being abducted by the Leviathan. Ah, I see. So it is Darth Revan, not dead as we were led to believe. Once on Lee Hon, also known as the Unknown World, Revan and his party would aid the Rakatan Elders versus their rival clan of the One, having betrayed them years before by not destroying the Star Forge. Atop the temple, Revan battled a now corrupted Bastila Shan, following her to the Star Forge and redeeming her through their shared love and the light. Good luck, my love, and may the Force be with you. 
Before destroying the Star Forge and finally leaving to the unknown regions, Revan would battle his old apprentice Malak for one final time attempting to redeem the wayward Sith, who finally saw dignity in Revan's redemption before finally succumbing to his wounds. And in the end, as the darkness takes me, I am nothing. There you are, what happened? I don't think anyone actually expected that he could be redeemed. I'm surprised you would even think of trying. There's no time to celebrate just yet. I was able to use my battle meditation to allow the Republic to break through the Sith fleet. The capital ships are in bombardment range. And that means we all have to get out of here right now before this entire complex comes down around our ears. Everyone else is already on the ship. Let's move. Class, you made it. We couldn't let you start the victory party without us, Admiral. I'm sending an honor guard to escort you in. You'll be getting a hero's welcome when we all get home. You have defeated Malik, destroyed the Starforge, and broken the spirit of the Sith. For this, I am proud to present you each with the Cross of Glory. The highest honor the Republic can bestow. From Coruscant to the farthest reaches of the Outer Rims, you will be known as the Saviors of the Republic. On behalf of the Jedi Council, defenders of the galaxy, and sworn protectors of the Republic, I too would like to honor you for your actions. We Jedi now have another tale to weave into the grand history of our eternal order. The redemption of Revan, the prodigal knight. Wherever you go, you will be recognized as the saviors of the galaxy, the heroes of our age. But you must remain ever vigilant, for one day you may be called upon yet again to defend the glory of the Republic against the tyranny of the dark side. For this is the destiny of the Jedi. <laughs>